Hello and welcome to Hot Money on Bloomberg Quint Live, India's first digital live streaming business news service. This is the show which gets you a complete trap of all the stocks that are buzzing in trade. I am Darshan Mehta. Let's welcome our expert, Samir Kaldra, founder of uh, Target Investing. Avinash Gorakshekar, director of research at Profit Mart Securities. And Vidhita Sharma, head of research at Narnolia Financial Advisor. Join me on the show. Many thanks to all of my guests for coming in today. Today on Hot Money, we'll discuss about the FMCG rally. Will it continue despite the expensive valuations of some of the stocks? Which are the best picks in this place? Uh, we discussed one large cap and one mid cap result that surprised uh, our analysts so far in the quarter. And lastly, we talk about Reliance Industries, which is showing strong momentum today after being under pressure for the past couple of weeks. But let's start with the first one. Uh, FMCG stocks yesterday rallied anywhere between 5 to 7 percent. No doubt most of the companies have already reported numbers. It was mainly on account of uh, the DDT that impacted and aided some of these MNC companies especially. But what's the view on this sector? Is there any stock that they like? Are they finding the sector valuations expensive? We'll ask our guest. Uh, Avinash, sure your, your overall trend on the FMCG sector uh, do you like this sector? Are you recommending any of the stocks uh, to any of your clients currently? Uh, in fact, uh, Darshan, we feel that uh, at the current level, you know, stocks like Godrej Consumer and Dabur definitely have shown a decent kind of performance, uh, both in terms of margins, in terms of the volume growth. And our sense is that, you know, the Jan to March quarter could definitely be a better quarter compared to the third quarter. Already our sense is that some green shoots on the volume growth uh, seem to be visible. And hopefully, you know, in the budget, the kind of money which has been outlined for the rural spends is definitely going to percolate down to companies which have a large exposure on the rural market. So I think uh, given a choice, I think Dabur and Kudra's consumer, uh, you know, obviously on market declines could be accumulated. Our sense is that the coming year could definitely be a better year in terms of volumes as well as margins. Okay, so uh, these are the stocks that anything that you, you, you are recommending your clients to uh, stay away from in this sector? Uh, actually, uh, Darshan, we track a very few stocks, but I think if you talk about Hindustan Lever, I would believe that you know valuations still seem to be a little pricey here. Our sense is that despite the fact that the results were slightly better than uh, market expectations, the volume growth still has not kicked into the level what uh, probably you know our expectations were. So I think probably you know uh, the higher kind of uh, multiple or the higher kind of market stocks would possibly be away. We would prefer to go for the slightly smaller companies where we believe that probably uh, both the urban as well as the rural spends could possibly drive their volume growth. Okay, that's the view that's coming in from Avinash. Uh, Nita, what's your sense uh, on this sector? Anything that, uh, you, first of all, do you think that this rally that came in yesterday will continue? And secondly, uh, what are the winners, what are the laggards uh, according to you in this sector? So, as we already know that uh, all the FMCG stocks are already mm. at high valuations and uh, the volume growth that we have seen even in this quarter is more of uh, because of, uh, you know, uh, promotions mm. and uh, one or one free, etc. So, I think uh, the prices have, uh, the price realization has kept the top line better. Mm. And uh, once once we see into the rural uh, thing, the rural is still into pain. Mm. And I think from uh, next quarter or the quarter next half, then only we can make a clear view whether mm. the volume growth will be. But if 5 to 7 percent is the volume growth that we think that uh, it will take the prices higher, I am not very confident on it. Uh, in in between all these spaces, because all, all the FMCG are a good quality stocks, they have a good ROE, dividend mm. payout. So I would not say they will be underperformers going forward. Mm. So they should be market performers. In the space, in the entire FMCG space, we're liking Hindu, Hindustan Unilever. Two reasons. One is because they have a very, very good uh, uh, rural reach. Mm. And now uh, they will be acquiring uh, Glaxo, which will be merged mm. in the next quarter. And uh, once the Glaxo is one, this is the only company wherein we will be able to see some top line growth because of acquisitions or whatever be the reason. We'll be seeing some uh, 8 to 10 percent uh, top mm. line growth going forward. And uh, rest, I don't, I don't see any meaningful volume growth or revenue growth in any of the FMCG companies. Companies. Because already, we, uh, you know, the uh, unorganized to organized is the one which mm. has, you know, helped the volumes in the past uh, mm. one, one and a half year. Because if we look at the basic uh, consumption, that has not go uh, gone up. For the listed company, it has gone up because of the shift from mm. unorganized to organized. So that's that's my take. Uh, HL should be the outperformer uh, because of the reach. And once if the rural improves, uh, it has uh, uh, I mean almost eight million uh, reach. 
Glaxo will add another two million. So I think uh, that. Should what what be about the food businesses you've seen counters like Jubilant Food, Westlife, all of them rally because of numbers? Uh, is that something that you're advising your clients, or that's something that you would tell them to avoid? So from a long term point of view, I don't see uh, any uh, you know anything uh, wrong into that company. But valuations, I'm still not comfortable. And I think uh, looking at the inflation or even the employee cost going mm. forward for these companies will be little uh, tricky going mm. forward. So that's my take on it. Okay, Samir, what's your sense on the sector? You think uh, the rally will continue? Any of these stocks that you've told your clients to start accumulating? So I think uh, rally can continue. Uh, correction wise, we haven't seen much larger corrections over here. Time correction can be one part of the, um, you know, justifying the P valuations in next six to nine months. But there will be pockets which will outperform for sure. Uh, like you said, Jubilant Foods and Westlife. The expansion of their past couple of years is now playing out in the SSG as well. And that footfall is helping them out. On the staple side, if I see uh, Dabur is doing really well on again the expansion of the distribution and the product line. So that's really helped them sustain that kind of a volume growth even on a higher base of let's say 15 to 20 percent which was there last year. For me, I think right now Dabur, Jubilant Food and Colgate. So for me Colgate becomes a priority list and Dabur in the staples. Uh, Colgate, given that premiumization takes much more faster pace and they are able to maintain their market shares. Though the volume growth is 2%, but again, I think on the reach which they have, it's going more direct, so they are able okay. to ha have a premiumization play much better over there. That's helping the margins and the profitability. So I think that's a better play. On the Dabur, I think the volume growth plays much better as compared to a HUL or a uh, maybe uh, right now uh, any other imami or anyone else. So I think it's better to be placed in these two rather than anything. Okay, that's the view that's coming in on the FMCG sector. The next one is basically we'll keep it open-ended. Uh, we're in the midst of earnings season, uh, almost uh, more than halfway through in, into the earnings season. We ask our guests uh, whether did they find any large cap number that surprised them. It could be either positive side or negative side, but the result was something that they didn't anticipate and it was a big surprise for them. Uh, which was that number? Uh, you must be analyzing a lot of numbers that come out. Uh, which large cap probably you found surprising? So, uh, one large cap which which I found surprising was Bajaj Auto. Mm. Uh, given the margins that uh, the Bajaj Auto uh, delivered and uh, the volume has already been uh, what we are seeing is coming out well. The export is contributing very well to the top line uh, for Bajaj Auto and that is keeping the uh, revenues as well as margins uh, you know, on the better side uh, going ahead. Also, if we look at uh, you know the the KTM sales, uh, which contributes around 10% to the pat of Bajaj Auto, that uh, uh, recently there has been some slowdown in the uh, volume, but uh, going forward, the way uh, the management is uh, you know uh, uh, putting more quality efforts going forward, so Pulsar and the KTM bikes will be the one which will be having more of the technological changes going mm. forward. I think uh, Bajaj Auto. From uh, from revenue po uh, point of view, it has very well uh, diversified itself. Not uh, so once the domestic slowdown is coming into uh, into the country, so Bajaj Auto is able to uh, you know mitigate it through its export sales. So some part is uh, not performing well, like Bangladesh or Sri Lanka. There is some issues, but uh, overall, I think uh, with the new product launches as well as catering to the newer market, <coughs> Bajaj Auto uh, uh, should perform going forward. Also, it should. Perform Perform well, yeah. There is one uh, one news which I just came to know that there yeah, the is Nigeria yeah one. the Nigeria. Uh, so there has been uh, some ban from the government from that side that we need to analyze because Nigeria right now it contributes four to five percent of the total sales hmm. uh, uh, for uh, Nigeria. I mean particularly the Lagos city. Mm. So that contributes around 4 to 5 percent of the sales and uh, uh, what this ban is uh, particularly on the uh, taxi front. So there are a good amount of sales which is coming from the personal uh, sales mm. also that we need to analyze. But uh, in the auto space I think on the large cap Bajaj Auto has been a good performer. Okay Bajaj Auto is the one that surprised uh, Samir which was that result that uh, surprised you? So I think for me, uh, on the negative side, HGFC Bank was there. Uh, the provisions were higher, the asset quality quarterly is uh, sequentially also going off. 
and the unsecured book is becoming larger even after the asset quality concerns by everyone so that is one thing i will be really um, you know taking closer look into and i might take out some profits also in, even if i am a long term investor because um, given the management change hangover also there so there are a lot of things which are on the ground changing for the bank so it's better to book some profits and uh, you know keep a hold to rest of the balance okay but uh, hdfc bank so somehow uh, disappointed on the negative side and avinash which was that stock that probably surprised you or disappointed you no i think on the surprise side which uh, actually uh, you know pleased our expectations was tech mahindra i think the numbers were much uh, better than uh, what the street and our expectations were uh, although margins were down revenue growth sequentially was pretty strong around 4% plus and i think the deal pipeline is pretty strong uh, they have already won deals worth about 1.23 billion dollars and uh, you know from the management conference call one thing was very clear that enterprise and communications is now going to be a very growth uh, kind of trigger uh, the margins could remain softer for one more quarter but hopefully fy21 is going to be a lot better so our sense is that you know typically uh, with these kind of deal pipelines looking strong and uh, the enterprise business again getting ramped up i would not be surprised price that possibly uh, we could see some sort of margin improvement in fy21 which i think the market is also waiting for a long time what's your pecking order in the top 5 uh, it companies beat in ftcs hcl wipro and techm uh i would believe that you know i think from the larger space we still continue to have a higher degree of comfort on tcs i think uh, tcs would figure out first then infosys and obviously within the smaller ones uh, we like tech mahindra i think tech mahindra definitely you know looking at the numbers you know uh, looking at all the other it players from the smaller pack tech mahindra definitely has done well and i think the management commentary darshan appear to be pretty positive and solid okay that's the view that's coming in on uh, the stocks uh, on the large cap front that surprise the street or disappointed now we'll talk about the mid cap end of the market a lot of companies uh, probably uh, will feature in this list but uh, uh, samir one mid cap yeah. stock that surprised or disappointed could be either so i think for the positive surprise jk lakshmi cement numbers surprised me uh, though the volume wasn't that higher but still given the capex they are doing and a lot of um, cash flows which were outgoing uh the profitability and the ebit margin expansion was pretty much surprising because the pet coke uh, utilization went up for them so that's where even i think uh, this company can really do up uh, well because they have added a com- new line of clinker unit hmm. around a 1 million ton uh, per annum so that will help the volume growth as well because their ca- capacity utilization is around 75 to 80% right now mm. and this capacity is coming towards the west and the north to serve mm. where i think volume is there but the pricing power is now coming back so i think this can be a real trigger for jk lakshmi okay uh, among the other cement companies that yeah. came out what differentiated jk lakshmi compared to let's say an ultratech or some of the other uh, smaller companies so i think the whole uh, if you see ultratech um, uh, comparison wise their integration is doing well mm. so the positivity is there on the large cap end uh but again the capacity utilization is still lower on a larger sense of hmm. uh, system if you see uh, sh- uh, others which have come out the only main problem which i see with the, them is even after a slight uh, recovery in prices which will come in their costs haven't gone down drastically if you see the especially the south ones uh, their costs are still high uh, mm-hmm. ultratech was able to substantially lower because of the pet coke expansion and the fuel cost mm-hmm. as well so others are not able to do that where jk lakshmi was able to pull the same kind of a trend let's mm-hmm. say in that sense so i think it's better off to be putting over there Okay uh I mean Ash which was that number that surprised on the mid cap end or disappointed could be No I think uh, on the mid cap side what surprised us was you know a small player uh, called Thyrocare you know from the diagnostic space I think despite the fact that you know competition has increased uh, what was surprising is that we saw a good the 300 basis point expansion on the diagnostic part of the business and uh, despite the fact that top line grew by rough just about 11 12% uh, EBITDA growth and the bottom line growth was pretty strong almost uh, 23% on the EBITDA and 32 percent on the profit uh, the management conf- uh, con call also mentioned that you know they are looking at a very strong q4 number and hopefully you know the imaging business which was uh, the underperforming segment in the third quarter should also pick up overall i would believe that you know despite the fact that they are still a small player uh, probably some more stronger top line growth could come in probably in the year fy21 and the new businesses which they are seeding hopefully that should also contribute to the overall expansion to the profits uh, they massively underperformed dr lal and yeah. uh, metropolis uh, despite being 
uh, cheap in terms of valuation as compared to them. Uh, you think it's time to shift position, if someone has positions to shift from, because Dr. Lal has already reported numbers, which were not all the best. Uh, it's time to switch from them to Thyrocare. I would believe that, you know, in terms of valuations, Darshan, the uh, scope for re-rating on Thyrocare looks pretty good because both uh, Dr. Path Labs as well as uh, Metropolis, if you look at it, uh, definitely are richly valued and despite the fact that growth is definitely continuing, uh, this is also a B2C business and frankly, our sense is that if the company continues to maintain its margins and, you know, uh, goes on to, you know, increase its top line growth, then the markets would definitely be pleased. Uh, this is an older player, but obviously, as you rightly said, the stock has underperformed, so markets could possibly watch the March quarter and then what kind of growth comes in FY21. Okay, so in fact, all three of them have outperformed in the last six months. 60% uh, for Metropolis and Dr. Lal and a 40% move uh, on Thyrocare. And remember, majority of the move, 20-25% uh, uh, will have just come in in the last one or two days post the numbers. So, uh, Thyrocare is picking up uh, and Dr. Lal sprightly coming off post the numbers. Uh, Vinita, which uh, stock uh, on the mid cap end did you find uh, that surprised you? So, uh, one stock that uh, surprised us was McDowell. And we are already having, uh, you know, we have already asked our uh, clients to have McDowell in their portfolio for two reasons. One uh, was that we were expecting some kind of premiumization to play in. Mm. And uh, that uh, from a long term perspective, uh, that is set to happen. But then we have seen uh, in this particular quarter that all the prestige and above uh, products, the volume growth was better than the popular segment. So that shows that going forward, uh, premiumization will play and that will help the margins going forward. On the uh, gross margin side, certainly uh, there were pressure on the ENA, uh, ENA prices, but that has cooled off a little bit. And uh, I think uh, if we compare globally also, we are uh, quite underpriced. The second part of uh, what the uh, United Spirits volumes can contribute going forward is the bottled in origin. So that part is uh, still uh, a lot more uh, mm. to grow from here. But if we look purely from the premiumization uh, side, the margins have improved and the volumes are coming that way. On the uh, cost front, they have undertaken a slew of measures like, you know, once they changed from uh, route, the route to market that they changed mm -hmm. and uh, there were a lot of franchises because of which they had to have a lot of cost into their, mm -hmm. uh, into their books, I think. And also a lot of, uh, you know, the factories at the uh, ground level, they have, uh, uh, they have done a lot into uh, mitigating all this cost. So I think going forward, uh, the operating margins will, uh, the cost will also improve as well as the average realization should also go ahead going forward. What did you make of the conference call uh, commentary that the management gave? The stock had reacted massively post that. So I, I think uh, <coughs> I didn't find anything negative into uh, the con call and they have been uh, suggesting of a double digit volume growth going mm. forward, uh, double digit uh, revenue growth going forward and I think that is pretty much achievable going forward. So maybe from a one year, uh, two year perspective, I think uh, United Spirits uh, should be a good stock to hold on. Okay, that's the view that's coming in. United Spirits outperforming the peers on a one year basis. Uh, and the final stock is Reliance Industries, which has managed to smartly bounce back in trade today. Over the past few days, it had seen severe amount of weakness, but today uh, the counter trading at the day's high, it's up almost 3%. So the rebound clearly been seen on Reliance Industries up 40 rupees. What's the way ahead for Reliance? Uh, uh, you know, should Reliance is that is the stock that you would recommend to your clients? Uh, in fact, we have, uh, you know, maintained a hold here, uh, Darshan. I think if you look at the third quarter numbers, not very exciting, both on the, uh, you know, oil, uh, pet chem business as well as on the telecom business. And I think, uh, you know, uh, the markets which were clearly waiting for the Aramaco deal to happen, I think possibly uh, this may take a little more longer time, maybe for another one or two quarters. So our sense is that, you know, for the next one or two quarters, the telecom business is also not going to see a significant amount of re-rating. Uh, the other companies have also taken significant price increases. So our sense is that somebody who has a long term kind of view can definitely hold on wait for some further dip probably you can add more but definitely in the near term it could be a market performer market performer on Reliance Industries. Any issues on the debt? Because that seems to be yeah, I think, a uh, lot you know, of concern people have on that. No, I think that was the key reason, uh, you know, the stock had actually earlier taken a good bounce once the Aramco deal was announced, you know, at the time of the Reliance AGM. But I think hopefully, you know, we believe that at least in the first half of FY21, this should materialize. I mean, it was uh, due to happen in FY20. But I think, uh, Darshan, this is going to be a big trigger once, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, Aramco puts in money, there's going to be a massive amount of uh, debt repayment, which 
which could obviously help the company. So maybe it's going to take another one or two quarters. After that, probably we could see a kind of a significant amount of re-rating. Okay. Uh, what's your sense, Vinita, on Reliance? Is that uh, do you all have this under active coverage? What have your what are your targets? What have you recommended clients? So uh, you know, uh, Reliance right now with uh, BPCL uh, coming up with the divestment plan, uh, we are a little. Uh, I mean, uh, conscious on whether uh, the deal with Aramco will actually hmm. happen or not, because it's a 60,000 uh, crore, uh, uh, you know, uh, divestment plan for BPCL, and Aramco deal with uh, Reliance. Hmm is uh, going on some uh, government interventions also mm. we are seeing government uh, you know and that deal is still unclear so as uh, avinash said that for for the last uh, from august when it was announced from then we have seen some rally in reliance and that was probably because of the debt restructuring plan mm. which uh, reliance was seeing with money pumping in from Aramco. So once that becomes unclear and uh, so obviously it becomes a very big uh, you know uh, hinge on how Reliance will perform. If we consider the uh, Reliance Geo or the Reliance Retail, both of them are performing well. I would not say Reliance Geo is now 35.5% market share, top performer uh, in terms of uh, revenues. Even Reliance Retail, they're adding some 400, 500 uh, stores every quarter. And uh, the SSG growth is around, uh, you know, 8 to 14 percent in different categories. I think uh, purely from business, from uh, our Geo as well as retail, that should uh, give some cushion to uh, Reliance. And uh, I think people can accumulate it on fall. But uh, not right now because uh, let the deal, you know, unfold and more clarity comes on into it. Once uh, that uh, uncertainty is there, it can change uh, the balance sheet picture of Reliance. Okay, that's the view that's coming in. Again, a hold on Reliance Industries uh, after Vinash, even Vinita is indicating a hold. And finally, Samir, uh, Reliance Industries, how would you rate the counter? So I think for me, uh, two things are very important. The gas output, uh, whatever the updates are coming, if mid-2020 is the year where the gas actually, mm. you know, the gas output really starts contributing to the numbers, then I think the oil and gas numbers on the quarterly basis can change. And second is the divestment. Now whether that's a Ramco deal, whether it's the tower in which being listed, I think the divestment on the whole is very important. So for me, it's a SIP mode stock. I won't buy fully in right now, but I'll do a SIP over here. Just because the lower um, kind of dips which I get, it will be very difficult to judge on. So it's better to do a SIP and hold it for a long term. Now, what's your sense? Any concerns on Reliance as such? One of them is debt. Uh, secondly, is this Aramco deal? Uh, what so, are I, uh, so I think on that, if the global growth comes off, the volumes at the refinery and if they start falling off, that becomes another kind of a very heavy um, negative on it because they have done a large capex in the last couple of years and that capacity is already lower. Now if it goes further lower, then your OPEX costs will increase automatically and your operating leverage which you are right now waiting for gets delayed even further by at least six to nine months. Okay, that's the view that's coming in on Reliance Industries. I think it's a consensus hold or an SIP type of stock that's been spoken about. But with that, it's a wrap on today's edition of Hot Money. Let me thank my guests, Samir Vinita, as well as Avinash. Thank you so much for coming in today. Ask BQ comes up next. Stay tuned to Bloomberg Quint.